the psalmist says in psalm 68 verse 35 he says oh god you are awesome from your sanctuary the god of israel himself gives strength and power to his people blessed be our god hallelujah 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 so the psalm says and i'm sure you know the psalm comes in the old testament right and he's saying that you are awesome from your sanctuary back then jesus had not come again right he hasn't come yet so for him the presence of god was something that he could only experience when he went to the temple but things have changed now because of jesus and he dwells in our hearts so we have a god who is not just found in a place but who is a god who is with us and the word of god says that he himself will give strength and power to his people hallelujah hallelujah so as we worship our god we are going to be strengthened and empowered hallelujah 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 let's sing to our god
worship you, we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory, oh God. We worship you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the scriptures this morning ask us to give our lives and surrender into the hands of God once again. Are we willing to do that? Yes? There used to be this um, small fridge magnet that I've seen floating around many places. It says, let go and let God. Let go and let God. Unless we let go, we don't create space for God to come and inhabit and do what he desires to do in our lives. Yes? Yes? So this morning, the Lord is like it says in Revelation 3.20, knocking at the doors of our hearts. He's calling us all by name and he's asking you, will you let me in once again? Yes? Some of the saints in the church say that our souls are like a mansion. Right? If you've heard of St. Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, St. Bernard of Clovo, they say our soul is like a mansion. There are many, many rooms. And in most of the rooms, we have placed people and things and prioritized them. But they say, when you start to journey into the mansion, at the center of the mansion, in the, right in the center, in that main important master bedroom, God must be present. But unfortunately, God is not in that. He's given some room somewhere, right? One of the rooms, like the guest bedroom, maybe. Yeah? We say, okay, you stay there, Lord. When I need you, I'll come. And then you can come and help me out with that situation or that thing. But then after that, you get back there because then I have the rest of my life that I need to run. But today, God is asking us, will you give me the reins of your life? Will you give your life, your will, back into my hands? And what will our answer be? I'm not so sure. <laughs> Is that going to be a yes? Yeah? Are you sure? Are we sure? So let's sing together. joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness and I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Let's try that again. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. 
we hear you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Though the sorrow may last for the night, His joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrow. The scriptures tell in John, it says, you did not choose me, but I, I chose you. You know, I've always believed that we come to divine not because we decide, but we come to divine because God wants us here. Yes? And also that we come here with our own agendas, but he has his own. And most of the time, he, he likes to override it if given permission. Isn't it? So the best thing sometimes to do is to say, okay, you know what, Lord, here I am. You do what you will. Isaiah 6 says, the prophet Isaiah, when he went into the temple to mourn the death of the king of Israel, to his amazement, he saw that when he walked into the temple to mourn, instead he saw the presence and the glory of the Lord. And it was so beautiful that he saw the seraphims bow down and worship. And he says the trail of the Lord, he could see walking from one side of the temple to the other. What a majestic thing to experience, isn't it? To a prophet who wanted to mourn. And then he could hear the sounds of the angels that were saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. And then in the presence of the Lord, he realizes what a sinner he is. Because then he tells the seraphim, why don't you take a amber from your altar and cleanse my lips. Sometimes that's what happens, isn't it? We have our mornings, we have our issues, we have our concerns. And we come into the presence of God, we come into his temple, we come to divine, to encounter God and to speak about that one issue. But when we actually experience the presence and the magnanimity of the God that we worship, we forget and we're put in place in a way because we know that who he is is greater than what he can do for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it? Who he is is greater than what he can do for us. Because you and I possess the greatest gift 
which is the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 So God has drawn us all here so that we could empty ourselves out and be filled with this Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So shall we sing a song, a hymn, a prayer to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to come and displace everything that is not of Him in our lives. Shall we do that? Yes? You are free to sit down if you want to sit down. All right, but if you would like to remain standing, you're more than welcome to do it. But let's make this song a prayer to the Holy Spirit, all right? And let's just surrender our lives into His hands and ask Him to come, displace every fear, every root of darkness, every pride, every vanity, every sickness, every strife, every enmity, the spirit of anger, if there be roots or places of deep unforgiveness, if there are strains in our relationships, right? If there are things that we have misjudged about God and about people in our lives, if there are broken relationships, we're gathering all of that. The Holy Spirit is a gatherer. And like St. Elizabeth of the Trinity once asked Jesus, she said, Jesus, what can I give to you? Okay? She said, what can I give to you? And Jesus said, Elizabeth, what do you have that I have not given you except your sin? Everything I am is a gift from God. My profession, my body, my intellect, my relationships, everything I have is a gift from God. So this morning, as we welcome the Holy Spirit, what do we want to give? We want to give up brokenness. We want to give up the things that burden us, and we want to exchange the yoke of Jesus, which is lighter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So shall we sing this love song to the Holy Spirit and welcome him to our midst. As a sign of surrender, I ask you to put out your hands. Just as a sign of surrender, okay? Tell him, come Lord, come into our lives once again. Come and refresh our spirits. Come and move in us again. Come and do something new in our lives. Come and stir up your presence in our hearts. Come Holy Spirit, we need you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you experiencing the Holy Spirit work and move in our midst? Yes? Yes? Shall we give a mighty clap offering to the Lord?